What is going on everybody and welcome to a TensorFlow Object Detection API overview slash tutorial. So in this video, all we're going to be doing is just doing a, just the, the quick setup of the TensorFlow Object Detection API. Um, I'm going to try to, I'm going to be doing this on Windows, mostly since my main focus of using the TensorFlow Object Detection API is in uh, games which run on Windows and not uh, Ubuntu <laughs> and not very well as, as often on Mac. So anyways, I'm going to be doing it on Windows. I will point out a few slight differences on Ubuntu, but it's basically the setup is, is the same. So we're just going to set it up, get to the point where we can uh, detect things in an image like this. And then in the subsequent videos, we're going to show how you might customize this to your own images and then to your own video. And for my purposes, the video will just, will use, uh, you know, streaming video from say Grand Theft Auto. So anyway, um, but you could change that to be your webcam or, or whatever. And actually, maybe first I'll just do it with the webcam. Anyway, enough on that. Let's set this up. So uh, they actually do have installation instructions, and you could totally just follow those. Um, there's like a few things that will hang you up, though. Like, for example, like installing TensorFlow GPU is not that simple. It would be great if it was that simple. It's not. So anyway, um, so if you need uh, instructions on installing TensorFlow GPU, um, I've got tutorials on that. Um, yeah. So <laughs> anyway, um, one thing to note that's actually uh, the reason why this is so useful is um, detecting things in images has all has been like something you could do for a very long time. But detecting objects in images that you could stream those images like on a video. So like to detect things at like 15, 20 frames per second, um, especially if you want decent accuracy is was a big challenge. Um, so, and to write the code that's going to do this for you yourself would just take forever. So this is a, a huge offering from TensorFlow. Um, so thank you uh, for that. So anyways, uh, let's go ahead and grab this stuff. Um, so so I'm going to kind of assume that you do have TensorFlow already installed. Again, if you don't, I've got tutorials on that. Also, make sure you basically have all of this. You can um, I mean, you can install it this way, but I would just install these dependencies this way, like pillow, LXML, Jupyter, Matplotlib, if you're on Windows, um, obviously without the sudo. Um, if you do need uh, admin, just open up CMD as an admin. So um, the only thing that might hang you up on your installation on Ubuntu is if you're not on 1604. So they say 1604, and it's true, but if you're on like 1404, for example, like if you're using Paperspace, the, the uh, deep learning in a box that's on Ubuntu 1404. Uh, the only thing that will hang you up there is um, basically your protobuf compile compiler and I will cover uh, what you'll need to do to, to fix that. So anyways make sure you have all these including uh, Jupyter, pip install Jupyter. Um, and then once you have those um, I think I'll take it from here. So so uh, the first thing we want to do is, is get the models directory. I'm going to just clone as a zip um, if you're on Ubuntu, just git clone, git, github.com slash tensorflow slash models dot git. Super simple. While we wait on that download, um, I'm going to come over here. It's just github.com slash google slash protobuf slash releases. And these are all the releases for the protobuf compiler. Um, I'm going to, because I'm on Windows, grab this one. So for Win32, uh, save. And if you need it on Mac for whatever reason, you could download that here. If you need it on Ubuntu, you can download that here. Um, and the process will pretty much be the same. At least on a, on um, on Ubuntu, you would just extract that zip folder. Just do sudo dot slash configure sudo make um, or sudo make check and then sudo sudo make install. On Windows, it's even simpler. You don't really have to do any of that. It's a standalone. So anyway, uh, I'm going to move this over here. So let's go ahead and extract here the models. And then while that's running, whoops, oh no, what have I done? Let's see. While that's running, I'm also going to extract here uh, Protoc, which is just gonna slap it into bin here. Now, I'm gonna leave it there <laughs> just because uh, for this tutorial, I would suggest you probably take it and put it in um, like your C program files or, or something more useful than in downloads. At least if you're like me, I clear out downloads relatively frequently and so eventually I would just delete this by accident. Um, but I'm gonna leave it here and then we just specify the full path. So Protoc is right in bin. So um, yeah. 
So moving over here, once you have those two things, we're going to come back over here and uh, pop into object detection. So the next steps are to set up that, you know, point that compiler basically. So let me just come back over here, installation. So it wants you to do the protobuf compilation. So from within that models directory, it wants you to run this. Now again, if you're on Ubuntu and you run this, and I forget what the error is, but if you get an error, um, you probably have an outdated protoc. You can check it by doing just, just in the command line just, or terminal, protoc dash dash version. If it's like 2.4 or something, um, that's the outdated version. I believe the most recent is 3.4. Yeah, so if it's not 3.4 um, and you get in there, go ahead and update it. That's probably your problem. So anyway, um, so we need to do this step as well on Windows. So I'm gonna pop this over here. Um, inside models.master, um, I'm gonna go ahead and rename this just to models, that's what it is. And inside just straight up models, you wanna run the following command. So let's just go ahead and copy that, come over here cmd right click now protoc isn't gonna you're gonna get this protoc's not a recognize blah, blah blah so a lot of people ask me about like this is like something people are like I, i'm getting this unrecognized command well it's because it's not in your path you, we could add it to our path if we wanted or i'm just going to specify the full path to protoc where did we go there we are um i hope that's big enough for you guys to see I think it. I think it is. Anyway, c colon slash um, users. Is that right? <laughs> I think it goes users h, and it was in downloads, downloads slash bin slash protoc. I think that's right. Oh, it was right there. I'm blind. Anyway, yeah. So we run that. No errors. Great. We're we're good to go. Um, then if you're on Ubuntu or po probably Mac as well, um, you're gonna want to export here. Um, to be honest, I don't even know what that line's doing. Someone comment below and tell me what the hell that line does. Um, I'm going to wager that's not necessary on Windows. And then finally, you could test the installation, but mm, we're going to we're just going to we're going to run the uh, the uh, the Jupyter notebook. So now what we want to do is let's go ahead and change directory into object detection, and then I'm going to do Jupyter notebook, and then I'll pop up the Jupyter notebook for us. Um, come down, where's IP, there we go, IPy notebook, and this is just a very quick demo, um, basically what it's going to do is it's going to download, and in fact, let's just run all, and I'll kind of explain what it's going to do, so run all. Um, what it's going to do is it downloads a pre-trained model for you, uh, and the pre-trained model is this one here, uh, which is COCA, which is stands for co Common Objects and Context, if I recall right. Um, I think it's 300 objects, but I'm not positive. Um, but it's just a bunch of common objects in context. <laughs> so anyway, um, it's going to download that. It's a pre-trained model. Now, later you could train it on your own. Um, you can basically train your own model if you wanted, or you could also train... Um, like you could continue to train their already pre-trained models. So depending on what your goals are, one might be easier than the other, especially if you're like trying to detect similar like things. It's, it's probably, it's pretty much always better to, to go off a pre-trained model. So uh, let's see. Oh, and it's done. So, so this just runs a couple of quick examples that it downloads of images. You got a dog and a dog. Um, and then you've got that image that was on there um, on their homepage, basically. So, um, running this whole IPython notebook takes a little bit of time because you're kind of setting everything up, but the actual detection process, like this here, like this loop, basically, like once you go into the session, image can be anything. This is iterating through just images in the test paths, which just downloaded two images for you. Um, but this here, this process, this loop is from what I found to be somewhere between like maybe 15 and 20 ish frames a second. So you can stream really well. <laughs> so anyway, um, in the in the next tutorial, I'm going to show you guys basically how we can take this, you know, super simple demo basically, and begin to modify this loop here to do what we want um, on our own kind of images uh, or video from either a webcam or I'm going to be using um, just video from like uh, Grand Theft Auto. Um, but you can use anything you want. It's already a pretty good object detector. Um, but if you want to detect custom objects, you'd want to train your own. So I'd also like to cover um, doing that as well. So 
Anyways, that's all for now. If you have questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I will see you in another video.